Welcome, I'm Ryan Shea, and today we're going to build a simple block stack application. You'll be able to first auto generate a block stack application that will demo login with block stack, and then we'll show you how to actually log in to the application with your identity that you've created on the block stack client. And so this will allow you to build a single page application that's completely client side, completely serverless and decentralized. And it uses an identity system that the user is in control of. And it uses data that is hosted by the user. So it's, it's completely free of third parties. So a link to this tutorial can be found in the video description. So you can go through this tutorial and then you can follow it along. All right, the first thing we're going to do is install Yeoman. And Yeoman is an app generator that will allow us to auto-generate a simple block stack application. The first thing I'll do is type npm install dash g yo, which will install this command line tool, yo, on this computer. And the next thing that we're going to do is install an app generator that plugs into this yo tool. So I do npm install dash g generator block stack and that'll give me the block stack app generator that's accessible globally on my system. So after this what I'll be able to do is simply type yo block stack. So first I'm actually going to create a directory for this application to live inside. So I'm going to do make dear hello block stack. I have that directory and I'm going to cd into it. And the next thing I'm going to do is type yo block stack and what that'll do is auto generate this application inside of this folder. So I've all of a sudden started up the block stack app generator. It says welcome. And now it's asking me if I'm ready to build a block stack app. And I'm ready so I'll say yes. So what it's doing now is it's generating the files and putting them in the folder and then it's running npm install in order to install all the dependencies. It's doing all of this automatically for me. So I'm going to wait for that to complete and then we can take a look inside. Great. So now we have all the files and we'll take a quick look. And Looks like we have a few files. We have our node modules over here, which is all of the dependencies that we've installed. We have some config, editor config, git ignore, package.json. We have this server.js, which we're going to use to allow us to make it really simple for us to statically serve our files. Now keep in mind there's no server that's actually needed for this application no server with a, with real logic in it. All we need is a static file server in order to uh, in order to have the files uh, accessible on our machine. And we have this requires.js which pulls in the block stack dependency which is going to be accessible from our front end code and that's going to get bundled up into a bundle.js file for our our uh, single page application to use. And here is a public folder with all of our public files, but we'll get deeper into that in a second. Now what I'm going to do is run npm run start. So what that's going to do is run a server, a very simple static file server locally and it's going to open up a window with our application inside of it. So there we go. Localhost 5000 and we have our application. So as you can see we can inspect, we can view source and this is our index.html and HTML file that we have uh, loaded into our application. So the next thing we can do is we'll go through some of the files that we have here. So as you've seen, we have this index.html file that we've just loaded. And this references a few other files. So it has a bootstrap file, which we're going to use uh, for some styling for our application. It has app.css, which is going to have the bulk of our styles for the application. It has bundle.js, which is all of our dependencies for the application, the, 
the node dependencies that we have prepared for the browser using Browserify. And then it has app.js, which is the file with the majority of our code for the application that we're actually writing and that we're going to use. So uh, I'll show you actually how we've created this bundle.js file. In our package.json file, we have these two scripts. We have a Browserify script and a start script. So this Browserify script is shorthand for invoking Browserify, which we have as a dev dependency, and taking all of the requirements inside of requires.js and preparing it as a bundle for, this, uh, for our front end. And then the other thing that we already ran was the npm run start command, which first browserifies our requirements and then runs our simple node server uh, to serve the static files. Right? And to emphasize one more time, this is a single page application. This is an application that runs completely locally. There are no remote servers that are involved. There are no a remote APIs that are being called. This is completely client side. It uses only uh, the use, it, it uses um, static files that are served locally, and it is going to allow the user to log in with an identity that the user owns uh, and is complete and has complete control over without requiring any third parties to actually get involved in the authentication process. So we looked at Bundle.js. We looked at um, you know we looked at uh, our other files outside. So we can dig a little deeper into this into the body of this uh, index.html. So we have a little bit of structure. We have these different panels. We have section one of this, which is what we actually see when we first load the application. So we can see hello block stack and this button that says sign up with block stack. And then we have section two, which is currently hidden, and this section will get sh will be shown once we've actually logged in. And as you can see, there's an image that we're going to display to the user, a welcome message, and a logout button. So that's everything that's inside of our index.html. So the next things that we can look at are the app.css and the app.js file. Right? And first I'll just show you, this is the bootstrap file that we've automatically included. There's no need to go into there, it's uh, bootstrap v4. So app.css, again, it has, it has styling. We don't need to go too deep into this now, but you can take a deeper look if you'd like on your own. It has some styles for our globals, for the body, HTML, other tags. We have styles for buttons, styles for the avatar, styles for scaffolding. And then we have our app.js. So this is where the real meat is. This is the logic that powers the application. So this application, very, very simple. It uses vanilla JavaScript, doesn't require jQuery or any other libraries. Uh, what it first does is it waits until the DOM has been loaded, and then it executes everything inside of there. If you look at the main structure of this app.js file, we have the we have an event listener that we've added to the sign-in button. And once the sign-in button has been clicked, we're going to execute this code. We have an event listener for the sign-out button that executes this function once the sign-out button has been clicked. We have this function called show profile, which takes in profile information and then displays a name for the user and an avatar for the user. and then first hides section one and then shows section two. So it's, it's flipping the, the display of the sections that we've looked at before. And this last part is the logic for signing in and signing out. So first what it checks for is, it checks to see if the user is signed in, right? And if the user is signed in, then it loads the user data from local storage. And then it takes that user data and it shows the profile on the screen. If the user is not signed in, then it checks to see 
if a sign-in event is pending. And what this does is it checks to see if there's any information, incoming information in, uh, in URL parameters to see if there's data that needs to be processed in order to sign the user in. So if, if that is the case, if that data is in the URL parameters, then we can call the sign user in function and we'll take in that data from the parameters and pass it directly into this function where we can then redirect the user to the home page of the app. And we'll go back to these two buttons right here and we'll, we'll take a closer look of what's going on in there. So when, when the sign in button is clicked, what first happens is an auth request is created. And that uses the make auth request function that's available inside of Blockstack.js. Then once that auth request is created, the auth request is passed this redirect user to sign in function. And what that'll do is it redirects the user to the user's Blockstack client where the user is managing their Blockstack identity. Whatever client that, that the user is using, it'll redirect to that client. It's not actually hard-coded to a particular location. And then the sign out button, what that does is it then just triggers this sign user out function and it'll redirect the user back home. So we can take a closer look and you know we, we've actually just we have actually just taken a closer look and now what we can do is try it out for ourselves. So what I'm going to do is click sign in with Blockstack and I will click open Blockstack and it's going to pull up my Blockstack Mac OS application. And this is my application where I can manage my identity, manage my storage, and manage my applications. So what it's done is it's shown me a, a sign-in request. Now this is a new app, just loaded it up. I have to actually create a profile first in order to log in. We're not going to go too deep into this right, right here, but if you really want to try it out, then you can actually go and create a profile and click log in and it'll bring you back to the application where you'll get logged in. But instead, what we can actually do is I'll show you a quick sign-in process that doesn't require any profile to be created. So I'll click quick sign-in, and it's going to bring me back to the application, and I'm logged in anonymously. So even if you haven't downloaded Blockstack, you can still try out the sign-in process and get a feel for how it works. So what it did was it just signed me in and it filled my name as anonymous and then it pulled in a default profile image for me to show my profile. So then I'll click log out and I'll get redirected back to the home page and I'm signed out of the application. Very very simple. So we just built a very very simple Blockstack application. We showed how you can build Blockstack with just under 30 lines of JavaScript code and other supporting files like the Blockstack.js library. All we needed to do was pull that in, package it, and get it ready for the application. So with our application, we can demo, log in with Blockstack, and log out with Blockstack. And the user can bring their identity with them, and they don't need any third parties to get involved. They don't need any remote servers. It's all local. So then you can actually take this application and if you want you can build off of this and you can utilize the other components of the Blockstack ecosystem. The next step is actually showing how you can take this simple application and add user data to it. You can imagine building a photos application where you can display the user's photos, photo feed. And you can take that and go even further and have a photo sharing application where there's multiple users that can share photos. So in future tutorials we will demonstrate this. But this is important because it shows just how simple it is to build a Blockstack application that has user identity and user authentication. So again, we have a link to the tutorial in the video description and if you want to follow along on the post online, you can click the link and share it with your friends. Excited to see you building on Blockstack.